Get ready. Okay, right on it. It's not just a growing deer guys you see week after week that like to hunt, but our kids do too. And a lot of them tagged a the turkey this week. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Scentmaster, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Whitetail Properties, Blood Sport Arrows, Outdoor Edge Knife, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Prime Bows, G5 Broadheads, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. My 13-year-old daughter, Ray, loves to hunt. She's been turkey hunting and deer hunting for years and is just as passionate now as she ever was. Just as daylight was cracking, Ray and I heard a hen tree open not far from the plot. I started tree open back because I want to keep that hen in the area as a living decoy. I also had a Montana Miss Perfect decoy out, which was a visual to help keep that hen in the area. It wasn't long for those gobblers were right beside the blind. They always know exactly where the call's coming from. We could hear them gobbling and hear their wings dragging. But it was through the wall to blind with a small window. I could sneak a peek but no way to get the camera or raise gun on the gobblers. When the gobblers finally worked their way around where I could see them with the camera, they were out of Ray's effective range. We gave them a pass, thinking they would swing back by. During this time, we'd had a Jake come in from the opposite direction and he spent a lot of time around that Miss Perfect decoy. Fortunately for him, Ray had already decided she was holding out for a mature Tom. Throughout the morning, literally for hours, we had turkeys in view or could hear turkeys. There was never a dull moment. But as turkey hunting works out, we were never presented with a clean shot and a mature tom. That afternoon, we took one of Ray's friends hunting out of a different hay bale blind. One of the best ways to recruit hunters is let your friends invite one of their friends from a non-hunting family. Unfortunately, I could kind of predict the results as the humidity was really high and it was overcast and we never heard a single turkey. Sunday after church, Ray was ready to go hunting again, so we headed back to where we started Saturday morning. It's Sunday, and I just finished my homework so I could come back out and look for a turkey. It was a calm, partly cloudy afternoon with high humidity, and I assumed the toms were not going to be very vocal. So once we got in the blind, I started doing a little calling and followed up about every 30 minutes. Because the afternoon was going pretty slow, Ray and I were playing chess on my cell phone, which is a good thing for me, because if I'm focusing on chess moves, I'm not constantly running a call. Our chess game was about over, and we were just starting to pick stuff up when Ray gave me a nudge and said there's a gobbler in the plot. Stop. He's looking. Okay, you're clear. Once again, the gobbler was to the far right, and I couldn't see it from my point of view. But the GoPros tell a great story of shifting gun and camera over and getting Ray ready for the shot. Okay. I can see its whole body. Is it in the timber field? No, it's in the field. I can see it plain as day. Can you see it? Uh, I can't get on camera yet. It's a big one. Yeah, its beard's really long. Yeah, we're gonna shoot it. 
wipe my safety off though. Wipe my safety. Make sure he's eating when you do it. Stop. Okay, can I get on now? That was awesome. You nailed that big rascal. Give it to me, girl. Closing of you, Susan. You nailed it. Ray's shot was true, and her persistence of spending a lot of hours in a blind paid off with a big tom. And of course, I loved every minute of it. One of my favorite things to do when I'm waiting on my big turkey to come out is read books and play games with Dad. We were just starting to pack up because it was getting dark in my bedtime, and then when I looked out, I saw a big turkey. Me and Dad had been playing chess on his phone, and I was almost going to win, but then it ended up in a tie. Adam checked his crop the next morning, and we were both a little surprised at what he found. Of course, she shot this in the afternoon, so it had all day to feed. A lot of times you cut them open in the morning, there won't be much in there just because they've been sitting in a tree all night. First off, just gobs of wheat packed in there but once we remove the wheat there's a whole bunch of acorns whole acorns some cracked acorns sprouting acorns so we're definitely not going to overlook hunting the oaks the oak flats there's a lot of them in that area most likely will kill a few more birds from the information we found here today the amount of acorns in the gobbler clearly explains why deer observations and even deer harvest were down in some areas in the midwest last year when there's that many acorns that they last until turkey season, there's plenty of acorns for deer to eat during the fall. And when they're feeding on acorns, they don't have to move a whole lot, and it's tough for hunters to get a pattern. Seth Harker also took his son on opening day of Missouri's youth season. You might remember Seth's son Trace getting his first deer last fall. Is it the dog? Mm -hmm. Just kidding me. Opening morning had Tom's gobbling all around them. These jays were working their way out front, but with several turkeys around, they were waiting to see what happened. Not long after, a strutter came into range, but something wasn't quite right. This is something we don't see every day, a strutting hen, and notice she's serious about it. With turkeys gobbling down the hill, they loaded up their stuff and changed locations. Unfortunately, throughout the morning they were on birds but simply couldn't close the deal. Next morning, they headed out to a different location with plenty of gobbling turkeys. I see him. There's a hand out front.
attractive world. What an awesome hut. Dude, was that a show over here or what? They were five foot behind you guys. I know, that's why I said we're shooting the Jake. First turkey, yes. Oh, Look what you did to his head. <laughs> I think it's a honey locust maybe? Yeah. Little two foot, they were standing on this side of it. You got them strutting and stuff, don't you? Oh yeah, I'm, I haven't heard one. Look, look at him. <laughs> Dude, that's a good shot, buddy. I mean, you just follow that head up, down. If it go down, he'd go down. Up, down. <laughs> <laughs> you were over here? I was over here, like, framed like this. Did and, you have the turkey And then you here? said Jake. And, of course, I was using this netting. So it's like, I'm, like, using my head to get the netting off the screen. <laughs> you just yanked it off there already? <laughs> Here we are finishing up the Missouri youth season and I couldn't be prouder. Trace got his first turkey this morning. We had a, an exciting hunt. Gobblers were on a string, came in, uh, two gobblers. This one committed, these other gobblers circled around and they were gobbling five feet from our setup. We finally got Trace concealed. Yesterday we struggled getting him concealed, getting us concealed. And uh, anyways, we were on birds all yesterday didn't change this morning we were on birds but the only thing that changed is we got it done this morning I couldn't be prouder give me some buddy <laughs> we're gonna go show grandma and papa and mom and I bet they'll be proud too great morning you got a lot of turkeys at your place don't you congratulations to Trace and Seth for a great weekend Young Pruitt and his dad Norman really enjoy hunting together. Last fall, we got to watch Pruitt take a buck during opening day. Smoked him. Boom. Smoked him. What? As a father, I know that a good hunt makes for great memories. Right to there. Now up to here. This week, we're back with Norman and Pruitt during Kentucky's youth season. So far, they've had some encounters with hens and jakes, but Pruitt's holding out for a long beard. After a night of some heavy rains, they hunted with their friend Jacob and decided to stay on the drier ridge tops, and it wasn't long before they had some action. Oh, there it is. Yep, there he is. This will be a great bird for Pruitt. Unfortunately, there were probably some hens on the back side of the hill and they kept this rudder busy. Suddenly, there were lone beards on the far hillside. Holy cow. Oh, holy cow. There's a fight going on now, baby. They were tussling and chasing each other. With the birds being preoccupied, Jacob and Pruitt decided to grab a fan and head out toward the action. Wow, these birds just covered 100 yards and watch those beards swinging back and forth as they close the gap. Dude, it's running. It's running. Can you see them? They're past it. You can see them. Oh, can I shoot? Now. Now. <laughs> Jacob was sure one of the toms was hit, so they peeked over the ridge to find out what happened. That's on safety. Shoot him right here. So safety. In the head. Got him. And we uh, crawled out here, and the, the, the strutters couldn't handle it. So came running in. They came running in after it, and and uh, Pruitt shot. And I knew by by the way that turkey was acting whenever he ran off that he got hit. So uh, he Pruitt went over the hill. Norman had to stay back, and 
unfortunately we couldn't get the second shot on film, but we had to do the most humane thing to do and finish the turkey off. Don't but, let him uh, suffer. We got another one down. Congrats, buddy. Thanks. All's well that ends well. Great teamwork and congratulations, Pruitt, on a great hunt. Another pro staffer, Adam Brooke, took his daughter Carson during the youth season. They had located this tom early on, and Adam knew it might happen fast. <laughs> See it biggin? <laughs> Carson's hunt ended up being a classic Ozark mountain hunt. Hunting big patches of hardwood timber. Usually those turkeys are traveling logging roads. And you gotta make a split second decision on your shot. And Carson yeah. did a great job. You put the kibosh to him. The kibosh. He's got pretty colors, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. First day of uh, Missouri's youth season. It's Saturday morning, and we got here this morning at daylight and didn't really hear very many gobbles at all. And then about an hour or so after daylight, we have four or five different birds all along this ridge kind of start to fire up and gobble a little bit. And, and this morning, uh, this nice two-year-old, I got about a 10-inch beard, inch and eighth, inch and a quarter spur. One's an inch and a quarter spur. That one kind of broke off. but. Youth season's always fun because gobble, gobblers do what you want them to do and and uh, they respond great. And This morning was a beautiful morning. The woods are blooming and this is a good time to be out and be out in the woods. So Winchester did the job and uh, now we can call it good and we can go fishing. <laughs> Congratulations to Carson and Adam on a fine Missouri gobbler. Even with all the excitement during turkey season, don't forget it's time for antlers to start developing and those fetuses are getting very large in does. That's why it's important to keep quality trace minerals out. We put one of our Reconyx Ultra Fire cameras over a Trophy Rock 465 station and I think you'll really enjoy this footage of a basher group of bucks coming in to get some trace minerals. There's a lot to notice in this footage. Which bucks have the larger bases? Probably will end up having the larger antlers this fall. Which bucks are the most dominant or have the larger stained tarsal glands? Those will probably be the bucks that respond to rattling and grunt calling. I'll have fun watching this basher group throughout the summer. We never have time to share all the cool footage we collect each week. That's why we developed the clips page. It's simply a posting of interesting clips we've collected throughout the week. It may be deer behavior, turkey behavior, or seminars we've given at some location. Check out the clips page to learn more about what's going on at growingdeer.tv. New season is a great time to take a kid outdoors and enjoy creation. But more importantly, make sure you have some quiet time to spend with that kid talking about the creator and what the creator wants for their life. Thanks for watching growing deer.tv.